We're going to start off our graphing unit with graphing linear equations using a t-chart. Uh, and a few things I want to point out before we start this. This may be something that some of you are familiar with from uh, last year. I know we kind of got into this a little bit last year. Um, we're going to get into it a lot more this year. This first part may be familiar to you, but there's going to be some more things added for sure that will make it a little bit different. Things I want to point out before we start. The graphs that we are going to be doing uh, probably 90 to 95% of this year, if we're going to be drawing graphs, are going to be linear. Uh, and what that means is linear, you just have to kind of look at those first letters right there. We're essentially making a line is what we're doing with an equation. Um, there are different kinds of things. There's like parabolas, which is a lot of like curves and things like that. Uh, but we're only going to be looking at linear equations probably for this year. When I come down here, this is the equation that you're going to see for most linear equations. In fact, for all linear equations anyway. Um, eventually, after this first part, we're going to be breaking down the different parts. And I'm going to show you a different way to do this um, that's probably more confusing at first but it's actually easier once you figure out what all the parts mean. But for now, we're not going to worry too much about it. Uh, but what I do want to point out real quick is, because this is something you're going to see a lot, is that this number that's connected to the x is referred to as the slope, which just means the slant of the line. And you could either have a positive or a negative slope, and it just kind of tells you um, how slanted the line is. This, the end with the B, and I don't know, I, I honestly don't know why it's a B. I'm sure I could look it up and figure it out, but what that stands for is the Y, we call it the Y intercept. And that's a fancy word for where the line crosses the Y axis. Okay, and if you think about how one of these graphs works here, uh, this would be your x-axis, the horizontal one, and this would be your y-axis. So it's where the line actually crosses this line right here, and we'll discuss that in more depth. And this is what it would look like with the numbers. Like for this problem, 3 would be your slope, it would cross at 6. 6 would be your y-intercept, and we'll get into that later for sure. Um, so this is something that you need to keep in mind throughout this process because we will continuously come back to this for sure. Sometimes you will see this equation just written out like y equals mx without the last part. If it doesn't have the last part in it, just assume that it was like plus zero, which meant it crosses at zero, so sometimes they just won't include it on there, but it's still the same kind of equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple different equations, and we're going to make a t-chart, and we're going to graph them on here. I've got limited space on here, um, but I've got sheets of graph paper in the back, and for your notes, that would be nice to get these equations down, how to graph them. Uh, using a ruler is also kind of a priority here, just because if you don't use a ruler, you can't be really sure if you're correct, because you may kind of have a wavy line, and it really needs to be a straight line to tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with this equation, and I'm just going to go off to the side here. I'm going to make a t-chart. And I'm going to label it x and y. We really need for a t-chart, um, I would say, three points at a minimum to make sure that we've got the correct line. Okay? There's going to be tons and tons of points that will fit in what we're going to do here. And any point that's actually on the line is a point that will work in here. Um, but we really need just three to actually draw the line to make it accurate. So what I always like to do is for x, I always like to start if possible with zero. Okay? That's always nice because it's really easy to do. So I go over here and put zero in for x. Okay? Negative two times zero is zero. And then if I do the plus three, zero plus three is of course three, so y is three. So that's one point that's going to work, zero, three. So I want to put that on the graph right here. Okay? And then I try to use, again, the easiest numbers possible. So an easy number to use would be like 1. Okay? If I put this in here, if I do 1 times negative 2, that's negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 would be positive 1. 
So my y comes out to be 1 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that point on there, 1, 1. Okay? And then I need one more. So usually I just go to negative 1 just to try to make it as easy as we possibly can here. 2 times negative 1. Uh, or uh, ne uh, excuse me, negative two times negative one is positive two. Positive two plus three would be five. So now we got to put that on there. So negative one, positive five is right here. That should be enough dots to draw our line. So now in this case, you would want to uh, grab a ruler and create your line here, and as accurate as you possibly can um, you put that line on there and I'm gonna try to put it on here as best I can making sure it's kinda lined up here um, that looks about right I would say okay so now we've got our line that fits this equation the one thing I want to show you about this is on this line now we only came up with three points on this line but any time you come up with a point where it actually crosses like an actual point, that would fit in here too. And I want to kind of expand this and show you that. Okay. So if I look on this line here, this looks like a point right there where it actually hits perfectly. Okay, And that's 2, negative 1. So since that point is on this line, it should be a solution to this equation. So let's try it out just to make sure. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. So that did in fact fit on our equation right there. Um, if I look kind of up here, I know I can't see it up here, um, but I believe this would be uh, 7 and then right here I think is what we would have. So I think that would be, let's see, 1, 2, and 1. That's going to be 7, negative, or negative 2, 7, excuse me. Negative 2, 7. So that should fit in this equation too. Negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4. Uh, positive 4 plus 3 is 7, so that fit as well. We only need three points, but I want to show you that any time this line goes through exactly like where one of the points would be, like right there, like right there, you are going to have something that fits in this chart. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So I will start with my T-chart got my x and my y. I notice that this is the x-axis, the one going side to side here. It's not labeled on here, but the y-axis is the one that goes up and down. That's something that's going to be key as we move forward. Uh, let's try some points here. I always start with 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. That gets us an easy first point to put on there. I'll go to 1 next. 1 times 4 is 4. Uh, 4 minus 2 would be 2. So 1, 2 would be on this list right here. Uh, and then let's try negative 1. And again, you can try whatever you want here. It really doesn't matter what you try, but it's easiest to use the smallest numbers we can. Uh, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 take away 2 would be negative 6. Negative 1, negative 6. We should have plenty of points for our line here, so here's where you go ahead and draw it. And I will, oops, I made that green, but that's not a big deal. Okay, let me try to get that as best I can. I'll pull it down the other direction as well. All right, so now that is our line, that fits the equation, and anything that's on this line is a solution to our problem. So for instance, if I go, here, that looks like that would cross right there, so that's 2, 6. That is also a solution to our equation, and we can check it just to make sure. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6. So that's how we would graph this. Now, switching gears a little bit, this isn't any different, but a lot of times you will see fractions out front. And for now, we're going to have to use the t-chart and we're going to have to find some numbers that are going to fit well with this. Um, eventually, you're going to know this as the slope, and it's going to be really easy to count out what it needs to be. But for now, we're going to need to use our T-chart.
and you know just because it has a fraction in front of it doesn't mean need, mean you need to be afraid of what's happening here um, but we will need to find numbers that probably come out whole would be a good idea so I'll start with zero because I know that'll work zero times three-fourths would just be zero anything times zero is zero plus one is one so that's a good starting point right there now here's where it gets to be tricky let's say I want to use one okay uh, if I do three-fourths times 1, and 1 would just be 1 over 1, that's going to be 3 fourths. And then when I do 3 fourths plus 1, that's 3 and 1 fourth. Uh, that's not necessarily a good number to have on there as one, or 1 and 1 fourth, or 1 and 3 fourths, excuse me, when I add the 1 to it. That's not good because we would go over 1, then we'd have to go up 1 and 3 fourths, and that'd be like right there. We really want to come out with a whole number for y over here. So let's scrap using 1 and try something different here. It's always a good idea to find something that your bottom number will actually go into. That's a good idea um, if you're looking for numbers to use. So I would say I'm going to use 4. Because 4 goes into 4. That's a good rule of thumb. So I'm just going to do 3 fourths times 4. So that would be 4 over 1. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to get 12 on top, 4 on the bottom. Simplify that, that's 3. Now if I do my plus 1, that's 4. So there's my y would be 4. So 4 and 4, okay? There's one that's good. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably come back and I'll try negative 4 would be a good idea. Find something that 4 will go into or if your bottom number is 5 or 6 or 8, find something that that goes into, and then your number is always going to come out whole. That's just something to remember. So let's say I want to use negative 4. So I take my 3 fourths, and I'm going to times it by negative 4 over 1. So I get negative 12 over 4. Negative 12 over 4 is negative 3. Then I add my 1, and now this is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, so negative 2 would go right there. So now, I'll get rid of this. Now if I put my line, or my next dot on there, uh, looks like I will do negative 4, negative 2, which is right here. Now I've got a nice line that just formed right here. Uh, I will put the green through it. Let's see. So put the green through it here, I'll draw it the other way. try to get it as close as I can here um, and that looks like something that would probably work okay um, and again you'll have your ruler so it'll probably look probably I would say better than mine um, but that would be good now what I, one thing I want to show you is it works the same way even if you have a fraction here's something that looks like it's gonna work okay that's negative 8 um, negative 5 so let's look at that here negative 8 negative 5 so if I take my original equation, 3 fourths uh, times negative 8 over 1, I'm going to get negative 24 fourths, which is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. So don't be afraid of this fraction. Just use numbers that 4 goes into to start with. Last 